Is it possible to Nuzlocke Pokemon Dark Cries and Kaizo? Have you ever asked yourself what the hardest Pokemon game ever made is? No? Well I have. Pokemon Fire Red Omega is pretty hard to Nuzlocke, but doable. Emerald Kaizo? Well, that game's inhumanely hard and almost virtually impossible regardless of what team you have. But is that the hardest Pokemon Nuzlocke challenge out there? There are other incredibly difficult and downright absurd Pokemon Nuzlocke challenges where your actions have lasting consequences, unlike in other challenges that I see on YouTube. Pokemon Reborn and Crystal Kaizo both come to mind and are true contenders, but there's one other ROM hack I know of, one that's known almost solely for having gameplay that's not just ludicrously difficult, but also completely unfair. That ROM hack is Pokemon Dark Rising Kaizo, a completely new game that uses Fire Red's engine. The game tells an original story about you being the chosen one. The chosen one to get to experience this fucking game. The game is about you saving the world in this brand new region where you encounter insanely powerful Pokemon along the way including legendaries, megaforms, and even fake mons, what? Apparently they're the most broken ones. The gameplay is basically a fire red system, but with some changes. Pokemon from the first five generations are included in this game, along with many new moves and abilities and stat changes. The regional map this time is completely different, with all new areas to explore. I'll be walking into this game blind. For this Nuzlocke challenge, I'll be using the same restrictions I always do, but in case you don't know, I'll be using the standard Nuzlocke rules, plus I cannot use any items from my bag during battle, and set mode will always be on, making the standard Nuzlocke mode even harder. But I've heard just how bullshit this game is to Nuzlocke. The boss fights are insane, and many of which jump you when you're not prepared for it at all. Level jumps can be insane, and many cheap strategies are used, such as double team and toxic exhaust shenanigans. Oh god. But apparently the Kaizo version of this game makes the game more fair than the original, and reduces the asinine level spikes while having bug fixes. That's nice. But the Kaizo version also removes all EV points from this game, so you cannot EV train at all. Just great. But overall, is this game even possible to Nuzlocke realistically? And how does this game's difficulty compare to Emerald Kaizo? Let's find out. Time to start the blind Nuzlocke. Wish me luck, cause I'll bloody need it. So I start the game in this trippy dream sequence where Arceus tells me that I'm the chosen one. God, this plot is already getting silly. I make my character and spawn into the core region. Just so you know, many of these areas, while being new, are somewhat similar to areas from Fire Red, and it uses the same music. The trainer sprite looks like a complete savage though, but I go to the professor's lab and choose my new starter. This is so cool, as this time around, they're all pseudo-legendary dragons, Dratini, Bagon, and Gibble. I have to choose one. And I wasn't sure at first, but after some thought, I picked Gibble, as it seemed to be the most viable one. There's no physical special split in this game, so Garchomp will have the best stab moves with Earthquake, and it focuses more on physical attacks. It learns Sword Stance after leveling up, so I thought it would be the best choice, though the other starters are also good. I picked Gibble and battle my rival, who has a bag on. This was not challenging, as Gibble just spams Stab Mudslap and won easily by abusing accuracy hacks. So now I've got my new Pokemon. I proceed through the plot and grind. To a stupid extent. Yeah, get used to me saying that. But to be honest, this wasn't too tedious to do with the emulators fast forward. But yeah, definitely grind at the start of this game. Okay, I'll say this now. After having done my first playthrough this game, the difficulty is such bullshit at times and is totally unfair and totally lives up to its reputation of being a complete dumpster fire for the most part. It's comparable to Emerald Kaizo, but for different reasons. After playing this ROM hack on NGBA, the emulator, and using this super fast forward, a lot of the game is actually pretty tame, mainly because you gain so much XP from random battles. The high encounter rate speeds us up, and there's a huge variety of catchable and gift Pokemon that are super strong. There's also quality of life changes, such as being able to buy the best TMs early on, along with evolution stones that you can get really easily, which thank god for that. I can't even begin to tell you how much I hated the fact that in games like Fire Red Omega, you could only use one TM and that was it. Like, you could only use one Earthquake TM, which you really wanted. At least that's a good change. Those things, along with the fast forward of my emulator, made the majority of normal battles in this game a cakewalk, as you'll see shortly. So you might be wondering, what makes this game so hard? Well, you'll see for yourself soon, but to sum it up, 
Some of the battles in this game are the most unfair I've ever seen in any Pokemon game, and I am not exaggerating. It's arguably even worse than Emerald Kaizo. Trainers abuse hacks so much. Paralysis, sleep, flinching and confusion are sometimes all of them at once. Or even worse, sometimes this happens in double battles, making the hacks even more RNG to deal with, even if you're way higher level than the opponent. It don't even get me started on Shadow Tag. Oh my god. I really, really, really hated Wobbuffet and Why Not in this game. They both got abused like crazy by the AI. Those Pokemon alone caused me so much trouble, and they're so unfair to battle since you cannot escape from them at all. But the final point about why this game is so unfair is because of the scripted battles. There are so many plot related events that once triggered, you have to go through them. Oftentimes, you're just minding your own business until a plot character literally jumps you out of nowhere and forces you to battle them. It's not that like you can say no to them. Sometimes you're in an area and you're wounded and you just want to get out and reach the next Poké Center, only to get assaulted by some dipshit without your consent. What the fuck? And get this, some plot events require you to battle multiple trainers in a row without letting you heal in between. Jesus, you have to constantly backtrack to heal yourself in the fear of triggering a stupid event or being dragged into a battle that you can't get away from. Overall, this game's difficulty is really inconsistent and can be infuriating. But now that I explained that, let's return to my playthrough so you can see how dumb this game can be. So I grind to a stupidly high level and proceed through the plot and already get dragged into a few mandatory battles without any warning, but at this point it's a cakewalk because I've done so much grinding. Until the point where I exit this cave and see a... What the hell is that? Is that Tornadus? Oh my god. Wait, no, what are you doing? Don't battle it, you idiot, this is an awful idea. Oh my god, no! I get dragged into a battle with a level 40 Tornadus and get destroyed already. I just started this game. But because this is a plot battle where I'm clearly supposed to lose and I don't have any Pokeballs yet, the Nuzlocke technically hasn't started yet. So shortly after this battle, I do get the Pokeballs and I'm now able to begin this Nuzlocke challenge for real. Oh well, let's see what Pokemon I can catch at least. I catch a Minchino in the first route, which is interesting. Then Gibble evolves at level 20. Then after that I catch a Tangela in the forest. So now I grind my two new additions until they are strong as well. After that I carry on to the next route to complete my team. But on the way there I trigger another plot event. This is one of those complete bullshit battles I mentioned before. And no joke, I lost two prior Nuzlocke at this point alone. You get automatically forced into a sequence of three back to back battles against these villain grunts who all use degenerate strategies. The first one already starts being a cheeky prick by using paralysis hacks on my starter, while having a Vulpix that uses Confuse Ray. Then the following trainer has a flipping Why Not on their team. Thank god I was able to one hit KO it, but my other two Pokemon were able to handle the last grunt. Ok well at least this time I made it past this part of the game. I can now catch several more Pokemon in the next few routes and towns. In the next town I receive a Mana as a gift. Then in the patch of grass there, I catch a Poliwag, which is nice to have. The route after, I caught a Lotad, which is also good, as the ice grass water coverage it gets is great. So now I start to do more grinding for the new Pokemon that I caught, and here the encounter rate is really high, but this time I'm not complaining about it, as I'll be battling a lot anyways to level up. After my new Pokemon are strong enough, I go to the next route, where there's loads of fire types, and I get really lucky and find a Tepic and catch it. In my opinion, this starter's design is underrated, but now I have a full team assembled with a good coverage for most types. My strategy here is to use my starter Gabite to handle all the trainers as it becomes stupidly overleveled. Then at each new route, I spend a bit of time leveling up my other Pokemon so they don't fall behind. Though Gabite is still the strongest Pokemon here by far. This is really apparent in the next event where I get challenged by a villain boss, but at this point Gabite is so overpowered it doesn't even care. That was easy. I reach the next city and catch a Rhyhorn. There is this one battle where there's this building and as soon as I enter it, I automatically trigger a plot event where I get forced into a boss battle without any warning, so thank god I was prepared for that. Do be careful, as if you're not prepared, you might get demolished unexpectedly. So what I do now is I prepare for the first gym. As I'm not aware of what the first gym leader is packing, I take no chances and really grind my team up. My Gabite's already super strong, so I focus on the other team members as some of them evolve and learn new moves. Eventually, I reach the gym leader with this team, and Jesus Christ, I think I overdid this leveling a bit, but only a little bit. It's only the first gym, I just want to be safe bro. And people thought I overdid the leveling in Emerald Kaizo, but as I start the gym battle, 
some plot stuff happens regarding the villain who possesses the gym leader like the Eye of Sauron or something. That doesn't really interest me. What does interest me is that this battle ends up being comical as Gabite wrecked most of the team and my other Pokemon finished off the last Pokemon on her team. Her team is really strong in its own right, but at my level, it's not threatening at all. So that was easy. Only a bajillion boss battles and gym badges to go though. So after that, I carry on and catch more Pokemon and battle loads of villain grunts. I saw one or two why nots, so I had to make sure I could one hit KO them. Something to consider is that the world encounters are really strong, which makes grinding really easy to do as you gain so much XP. After loads of random battles, my starter finally evolves into a Garchomp and is now a monster, destroying everything in its path. Similar to Mount Moon, there's a trainer who lets me take a fossil here, and I take the Plume Fossil, which is different I guess. I think that's Archaeops or something. Then as soon as I leave this cave, I get automatically challenged to a double battle, but I didn't care in the slightest here as I was so strong. I did catch a Servine in the next route, which is awesome. Another starter in my team is good. Speaking of starters, I now have an Embor in the team, as my Pig Knight evolved. After another grinding sesh, I fight... Darkslave Brock? What? I don't care who he is though, he gets the boot. But right after that, my rival jumps me and wants a battle also. He also gets the boot. Look at this dude in his level 24 shell gone, get out with that. Luckily my Embor manages to beat this Wobbuffet. God, that Pokemon is so obnoxious. But there was this incredibly stupid double battle I had to go through, and it was not fun at all. There were six Pokemon to go up against, and the first two were Umbreon and Melotic, and both of them abused Sleep and Confusion, which was so obnoxious. This battle was so dumb, as I almost, almost lost, despite my ludicrous level advantage. After a few minutes of me switching back and forth, and getting hit by Toxic a lot, I eventually won that double battle, but it was such bullshit. Garchomp almost died, and in a final desperate attempt, I had no choice but to use Earthquake with it, knocking out everything in the field, including my own Minchino which hurt me, but I had no choice but to sacrifice it. At the end of the battle, my team was completely wrecked. Half my team was dead, and the other half was holding on by a thread. At least I survived, but barely. Afterwards, I find these really useful NPCs who sell great TMs here, and I reassemble my team in Grindness Cave, which is a great place to gain XP, while catching some new Pokemon to replace the dead ones. Before moving on, I battled the second gym leader first, and yeah, this battle was a complete joke. It was pretty much Garchomp Smash. The thing is with this game is that most of the regular battles are completely fair like this one. They're not problematic. It's just a stupid shite like hacks and Wobbuffet abuse that makes this game incredibly unfair in a dragged playthrough. After one quick hour of grinding, I got my whole team to a stupidly high level again and proceed to the next plot point. Things were going really easy, until I started running into a few problems. The villain grunts here start spamming explosion, fucking explosion, you know, the bane of every Nuzlocker, and I lost several Pokemon to this, Galvantula and Superior, what the hell even is this, such bullshit. But what happened next was even stupider, I have no idea what the hell happened, but this fucking why not somehow outsped me and used Destiny Bond and knocked out my Golbat even though it was level 5, for god's sake I hate this Pokemon, stop spamming it in this game. How the hell did that even outspeed me? Did it have a quick law? If so, then that's so, so stupid and so unfair. What? Not against. Please go away. The boss of this cave uses an Entei. Thankfully this gets destroyed. Oh my god, thank god I've cleared this area. Now I have to reassemble my team again. But luckily things do get better after this. I trigger another plot event and luckily there's no mandatory battle this time. I get a message from Arceus about how I'm the chosen one and all that. But the best thing is, is that I get given a Victini as a gift. Wow! Finally some good news, that's a really strong Pokemon I can use. For some reason I got two Victinis because of the bug or something, so I just kept the one that had better IVs and natures and got rid of the other one. I also got a Slack off, which I trained up, then had another grinding session, and now my team is really strong again. I go to another city, and continue to catch more Pokemon, and I get this Arkin which is neat, but nothing so far frets me much. On the SSN, I do get into some insane double battles that just speak for themselves, but luckily I beat most of them unscathed. I run into that trainer with a level 40 Tornadus, you know the one from the beginning of the game who wrecked me, and this time Garchomp gives him an atomic wedgie as revenge. But now there's a double battle with two genie Pokemon. Oh my days, this whole team can just get lost. But holy moly, this last double battle was so stupid. There were two legendary dog Pokemon, and my team was getting wrecked. 
I was uncomfortably close to losing, and in one desperate attempt, I had no choice but to make my Garchomp once again use Earthquake again to knock out my own Tangrove as the two legendary dogs were too threatening. The sacrifice had to be made as Earthquake ended up winning me the battle. This saddened me greatly, but at last the battle was over, with only one casualty. God, this game can be so obnoxious at times. Anyways, goodbye Tangrove. To add more salt to the wound while grinding afterwards, my Rhydon got beaten by a wild Umbreon who used Pursuit. God damn it. I caught a wild Gopherita that had an adamant nature. Oh, I hate it when it happens. But anyways, I reached the third gym leader who uses Psychic types, and this was also a joke, just like the last gym leader. God, there's so many bullshit battles in this game, but the gym leaders here are always easy. I guess it's because they're one of the few battles in this game that are actually fair. But at this point, Garchomp is so ludicrously strong. All I need to do is to safely make my way to the next town, and then I can catch some new strong Pokemon. Right? WRONG! No, I didn't even make it to the next town! My Garchomp dies to a fucking Wild Wobbuffet! You have got to be kidding me! I used Sword Stance to ensure that I could one hit KO it, but the prick went for Destiny Bond, and for some reason, Sword Stance ran out of PP, meaning that Garchomp had no choice but to knock itself out. Fuck me! It was a bloody wild encounter, this cave is full of Wobbuffets! This pissed me off so much as my ridiculously OP starter is now dead! Now I'm screwed, I have no choice but to play on without it. But eventually my slacking manages to make it through the cave, as I know it's strong enough to one hit KO Wobbuffet, so it can't be countered or anything. At least that's a relief, but just as I thought I was safe and I was about to leave the cave, I get forced into another mandatory plot battle. Okay. I just need to waste this guy and I'm free to go. The battle goes well as my team is able to handle most of these threats effectively as I switch slacking in and out to play around the true hunt ability. But alas, as he uses his last Pokemon, flipping cure and black, I stupidly cause my own demise. In hindsight, slacking was probably strong enough to one shot this cure, him, but instead I tried to use slack off to heal up instead, just to be safe. This worked until I realised that Curum got the freeze hacks on me making Slacking unable to fight back. Oh no. I had no choice but to switch in Victini, but it wasn't enough to do much to it. Oh no, not Victini. Then after that, the rest of my team went down, ending in my own defeat. This really was my own fault in hindsight, as I didn't prepare enough, I would have definitely not lost had Slacking just attacked the Curum instead of trying to heal itself up. In the end, my stupid oversight cost me this run, and I have lost yet another Nuzlocke. At this point, I'm just tired of this game. All these hours, and I haven't even reached a fourth gym leader yet. While this game does have some cool things in it, and is reasonable at some points, the gameplay becomes so stupid and unfair to the point where it's just not enjoyable to play against, especially Wobbuffet. But this concludes the Nuzlocke. Next time, I'll be moving back to Driano's ROM hacks. You know, the guy that made Fire Red Omega. I'll be doing Renegade Platinum for my next Nuzlocke challenge which is basically the original Platinum, with the national decks from the start and a big difficulty increase, like Fire Red Omega but for Platinum instead. That will be cool, as I've never actually played the original Platinum, I've only ever played the OG Pearl, but that will be fun. I will be doing the other Dreano ROM hacks afterwards, like Sacred Gold and Blaze Black, which will be fun. But overall, Pokemon Dark Rising is every bit as cheap as the ROM hack community has made it out to be. I'll leave the link to it in the description if you want to try out Dark Rising, but if you do, Please be careful. But anyways, I will see you all next time. This is Ding Dong, signing out.